Hey guys, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living and we are getting some weather right now. Check out the behind me. It's almost like Halloween. It's super foggy. You can't even see a hundred feet away. And I don't know if you can hear it, but it's, I think it's sleeting. It's a very, a very light rain sleet sound, but kind of cool looking, a little bit foggy, a little bit spooky, kind of like fall. So in today's video, we're gonna go over the, some of the regulations for doing your own electrical install as a homeowner. That's one of the things you can do in Colorado is do your own electrical. So Brian's taking that job on. So there's some unique things or some requirements that you might find interesting, you know, some of the regulations and some of the things that we're having to do to do our own electrical. And um, you know, like what kind of cable we're using and the kind of circuits, how many circuits we need and how many outlets we need. And a lot of these things are kind of stipulated in the electrical requirements by the state. So let's get down to it. I'll tell you guys all about it. One of the things that we're doing different, I guess from some folks, uh, is that we're actually doing the wiring from the power pole to the house. So we're digging the trench, putting in the cable, and you ordered this cable. How did you know what to get and what, what well, kind of specs is this? Uh, I don't know if I did know what to get. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, I needed to, we needed something that we could put underground and without conduit. Something that we could put underground without conduit. And uh, so I call, I just went online looking up who had good prices and then went back and forth emailing and then eventually talked to one of the service technicians at the electrical company I went through. And, uh, and then we had a couple opinions as far as the size of the wire or cable um, to run the whole four, 500 and uh, like 20 feet. So we ended up getting a 250 MCM cable so it's a pretty big size come around yeah I think it has the specs stamped on to the yeah we could zoom in you can see how big it is compared to my thumb yeah so the uh, so there's three wires plus the ground the ground is a little bit smaller I think that's a 40 wire this or four aught they say and it's then, like a bunch of little when you really zoom in it's like a bunch of right it's all straight it's stranded aluminum so <laughs> It should be uh, adequate to run for for a uh, 200 amp line. I was thinking I was going to get the 350, but when I talked to the uh, the technician at the electric company, he was or the cable company, he he thought this would be more than adequate as well. Plus, it was a little bit cheaper. I think it was we probably saved. Well, we we saved on the the wire probably 400 dollars, but then all the panels or the, the panel that we got and I'm sure it's all the residential uh, circuit breaker boxes will only accept a wire that's up to 300 MCM so I would have had to get these pin connectors to reduce it down and each one of those pin connectors is like fifty sixty dollars plus you have to have some a fancy tool to crimp it on so there would have been um, at least six um, pin connectors. So it would have been like $300. Plus, I have no idea where to get that. The special tool is the always special 200 bucks. tool, which yeah. I think the tool itself is like three or $400. So it would have been calling somebody up saying, hey, can I borrow your crimping tool? Or <laughs> <laughs> yep. so. But anyway, so one of the issues we have, though, is that I bought the, the cable first, and then I found the homeowner's resource guide for Colorado and it tells you the types of cable that you can use and so if you look if you zoom in over here and this is what you want to see you want to see the it's USE-2 so underground service uh, entrance dash two mm -hmm. and, and then it's XLPE so that's um, Crosslink polyethane. So, on the unfortunately, on the Colorado guidelines, it says for USC type wire, it also has to be stamped. I think RH 
H or RRH, like has to be triple rated to come into a building. So, and I, I think that's because the depending on the type of sheathing it has, whether it's fire retardant or not. Now ours only has to come in like eight inches. Mm -hmm. It only has to go through the sheeting and then into the box, which will be right on the other side of the wall. So it's not like we have to run six feet into the house. Mm -hmm. And so, but this cross-link polyethane is supposed to be super durable. It's, it's way stronger than uh, like PVC coating. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I gotta call the inspector this week and, and see what they have to say about it. If they say we can't run in the building, then we'll have to get an exterior uh, circuit breaker panel. Mm, okay. I was wondering what our option was, if that was yeah. the case. I think that's the, the option we have, is just run an exterior circuit breaker panel. Okay. So. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, well, there's like this whole huge list of acceptable cables. Except I got the one that <laughs> was not acceptable. <laughs> it wasn't listed. Maybe, maybe, uh... Yeah, I mean, who who would have thought there's like 20 different types of, hmm. I guess an electrician would have. <laughs> yeah, well, but, I know, you know, but I guess we'll find out from the inspector what they say, what we can do with it, because we can still use it, it's just. Yeah, just that whether the circuit breaker panel is inside or outside. Mm -hmm. All right. The next step in planning your electrical is what, like figuring out the circuits and the type of circuits? Right, so. Yeah, so how many circuits we need for the kitchen, how many circuits for lighting, um, receptacles, and exterior outlets, exterior lights, that kind of thing. So let's look in the kitchen and what you figured out so okay. far. More supplies. Been working away. There's a bunch of wires in here, and there, I see there's white, and then there's like a yellow one over there. Right, so, so yellow is a 20 amp circuit, so, so that paper I was referring to before is a, it's a homeowner's guide to Colorado to, to doing your own mm -hmm. electrical work. So as a homeowner, you can, if you're going to live in the house afterwards and own it, you can do your own electrical work. So there's about six pages of guidelines as far as you know, what they expect you to do. And, uh, one thing is you have to have two separate... 20 amp circuits for small appliances in the kitchen. So and that, in, that can include the refrigerator. So we have a refrigerator outlet down here. So that's a 20 amp line. That runs over to this outlet. And then that runs directly to the, the, um, bot, the electrical box. So that's one full circuit, that's the refrigerator up to that outlet, and yeah, that just. So two outlets, basically. There's one circuit, okay. Because we don't have a giant kitchen, so. And then those, so out, I remember the outlet three and four are going to be on one circuit as well. I still I had to buy more wire to run it the rest of the way. And then the oven is uh, going to be gas. So that'll be on a, a separate 20 amp circuit as well. It, I don't, it probably doesn't need 20, but. I have to look up and see whether I can put the oven, since it's gas, and the um, vent hood on the same circuit. Mm -hmm. So that would be convenient. Okay. So, the and so what's the well, the white wire then? That's not 20 so the, amp. Right. So the white wire is 20 or 15 amp circuit. Okay. And so we can put That's all the lights. All your lights. <laughs> so the lights can go on the 15 amp circuit. And then you can put up to 800 square feet of living space lighting on one circuit. And so we're... That's a lot. Yeah, so we're not even 1,400 square feet for the whole house, so we can do uh, basically two circuits. And then I was looking at uh, lights at Home Depot today, and with the new LEDs, you're really only using like 0.5 amps. Hmm. So it should be... And so some of the, the lights will be LED, some will be uh, probably the fluorescent bulbs, but it just depends on what we, what we mm. pick. Mm -hmm. so. Anyway, all this stuff is for the two ceiling fans with the lighting. Um, and then uh, got the 
receptacles, nice, uh, wiring all the receptacles for the living space in the closet, and then now I got to start doing the ones for the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So also for exterior, you have to have at least two exterior outlets that are basically weatherproof or weather resistant, and then. If you have a deck, you also have to have an exterior outlet on the deck. So, so these are just additional Colorado regulations right. for home building. Two, the minimum two exterior outlets and one. Right, and then if you have a deck, you have to have more. One more, okay. So, so once we our deck wraps all the way around the front, we'll probably end up having four mm -hmm. outlets up there. Um, I probably should put another one in the kitchen area because. That'll be deck eventually. Mm -hmm. And everywhere, you, there's certain spacing requirements. So, like within, I think it's six feet of a door, you have to have an outlet. And then within six feet thereafter, you have to have another outlet until you get to another doorway. So, those are important so, things to know when you're doing, if you're going to do your own home. Right. Yeah. You're going to have to know. So, knowing your requirements for your wire types, your circuits, how, and how many right. go on each circuit, and then your spacing. Right. So if you've got something near a door, would you say if it's near a door? Yeah, or? so it has to be like within six feet of a door. Uh-huh. Um, and then every, within, then they have to have another outlet within six feet of that one and keep going around until you get to another doorway. Mm -hmm. So, but mostly, I mean, if you think about it logically, where you might want to have an outlet, it generally works out anyway. Mm -hmm. So... And I, I tried to be symmetrical with them, so it's for the living quarters, the living room area to put an outlet, you know, where you might have a table and a lamp or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to have so many lights, like at least one light per room, which is obvious, but... Hmm. Um, so. Well, is there... What's the most time-consuming part? Uh, just trying to figure out your routing for the wire. So you're not, you don't want to waste a lot of wire during the route stuff. You want it to be the most efficient way. And so I've never wired a house before, so I'm just, you know, trying to figure out where, how to get from the, the breaker panel to like an exterior distance that's, you know, 30 feet away, mm -hmm. the most efficient route without making too much of a mouse. How, how much, um... Wire have you gotten so far? As far as like the white and the yellows, like how much have you spent, or so I've have already you used, used 50, 100 feet of the yellow, the, the 20 amp, mm -hmm. and I need, and I bought another 250 feet today because mm -hmm. uh, I figured whatever's left over we'll use for the other part of the house, and then I bought, I've used at least um, 350 feet of the 20 amp wire. Mm -hmm. And I haven't wired anything downstairs or exterior yet, or anything in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So I bought another 500 feet of that. Okay. Um, so, and then I bought some uh, can lights for the basement. Mm -hmm. So, just to start planning that. So the wiring so far is about, what, about a day's worth of everything you've kind of finished? Yeah, yeah pretty much. So far? So finish the kitchen and the living area f is about in about a day, but also all the planning. I'm sure that's right, just... yeah, and then, you know I constantly have to think about it and reread those guidelines because they're you know they're written like guidelines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. like to have enough, and then like in the kitchen you have to have an outlet within within three feet of the sink, and then on the counter space like. Within any one spot on the counter, you have to have an outlet within 24 inches of that. So if you put an appliance down, like a blender down, you have to have an outlet within 24 inches of it hmm. in any direction. Damn, so short. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Uh, definitely some things to think about if you're going to be doing your own wiring for your house. Uh, it's doable, I guess, if you have the guidelines. And probably, is that, was, it, was that a Google search? To find yeah, the yeah. guidelines for homeowners. Well, I was actually, when I was looking up the permitting, I found the homeowner's guide. Okay. So. So what about inspection-wise? How many inspections do we need and how many, so, when do they have to happen? So two. So I have to run out of the wiring. 
I have to staple the wiring so that it's secure. Mm -hmm. And that was the other thing. Within eight inches of a of the box, you have to have a staple secured in the wire. So, uh. so they're going to check that. They're going to check how much of the wire is actually sticking out. Mm -hmm. um, what the splices all look like. So I'm just going to strip the wire, and then where I need to um, wire nut things for like uh, lights and fans and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, I need to do that without installing anything. So I won't install any outlets, no fans, lighting, or anything like that. It's okay. just about the wiring. So it's the rough wiring inspection first, right. and then before they turn the power on, they come back with everything hooked up? Right. So okay. everything will be connected. All the lights will be in place, the mm -hmm. fans and okay um, stuff and uh hot water heaters that kind of stuff oh, okay cool. all right well a few more days worth of work before yeah. we <laughs> yeah. yeah and then get that get that cable rolled down the hill into the trench right yeah we need but, to get that done so uh and then uh, i guess find out from i guess who is the state inspector yeah who you whether or not we can wire that directly into the house or not so yeah uh, we're, we're learning too, folks, so you know, <laughs> if you have any hopefully questions, not the hard way. yeah, hopefully not the hard way, gosh, yeah. but uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to use up our, use our resources as we, as we find them, but yeah. if you have any suggestions or helpful hints or any other questions about doing your electrical, just leave some comments below for us and we'll get back to you, but thanks again for joining in. We appreciate your support and encouragement and, uh, and, and your suggestions. Everything's great. We, we're, we're plugging at it, and hopefully we'll have some more to show you soon in the next video. All right. Take care. Bye.